Hi. <laughs> hey, Dennis. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty fine. So um, I was actually a bit confused because uh, I didn't know. I. I actually, I never figured out if I should uh, invite you on your private account or through the vacant shares account. But it worked pretty fine. Yeah, I was thinking about the same thing, but then yeah. we just use this one, so it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much um, for taking some time off and to uh, talk today about your project, Vacant Chairs Magazine. Beautiful, Absolutely. Beautiful yeah. project. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me. It's an so, honor. So <laughs> it's, my first, I have to admit, it's my first time doing a live, so yeah. exciting. exciting. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, okay, so um, I'm just going to, to, I think we should then start the talk. So yeah. um, hi and welcome everyone to uh, this week's live talk with uh, Dennis Eichmann, curator um, and founder of the beautiful, beautiful Vacant Chairs magazine. Um, so again, thank you so much for taking some time off today uh, and to talk to us. And so why don't you just start by introducing yourself, Dennis? Sure, thank you. Um, so I'm Dennis Eichmann. I was born in uh, northern Germany. That's why I, where I grew up. And then um, after school, I studied fine arts in Kiel. And um, I um, did like an Erasmus semester in Vienna, where I studied in the um, expanded pictorial space class of Daniel Richter, uh, oh, yes. a German painter. I don't know. I mean, you know him, or maybe the audience knows him too. Um, and then I went back to Kiel to finish my um, my bachelor's in, in fine arts. Um, and after that, I moved to Berlin to study fashion design. Um, <laughs> which got me a bachelor's and a master's degree. And now I'm doing uh, freelance photography and working as a freelance photographer slash artist in Berlin. So I'm kind of like all over the place. Yeah. But it's, um, to me, that's the way I am. That's the way I work. And um, so I have a lot of different interests and projects. And um, that's how also this, this Vacant Chairs magazine came about, because this is one of my interests, I guess. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, so my first question is, um, like, besides the perhaps more or less um, obvious aesthetic reasons, um, like, what is it that you find so appealing in photographs of empty chairs? Um, there are several things I would say. Um, first of all, it's um, it leaves so much to the uh, imagination because when you when you look at uh, empty chairs, I mean they're designed for the human body, so that 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 means when you look at them, you kind of like see. Um, like a shadow of the person or the shape of the person where the person should have, could have sat. Mm -hmm. um, but then also um, it's a place to rest. So when you look at an empty chair, it's like, um, oh, maybe I want to sit down there and relax a little bit. Because I mean, me personally, I get exhausted very easily. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever there's like a free chair, I'm like, oh yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, but um, for for curating them, I find it super interesting because a lot of these um, chairs look very similar, and yeah. you don't you don't always know where the picture has been taken. So I think it leaves a lot up to to the imagination. Mm -hmm. um, and as, and especially those those monoblock chairs. Um, I mean, this is like a very iconic chair. Uh, it's like, uh, it's really, it's omnipresent, like everywhere you go, especially like in more uh, touristic places, uh, like if you're on vacation. Um, I mean, I was in Greece a couple of weeks ago um, in, uh, on Crete. And there, like on the balcony of the hotel, everywhere were those like monoblock chairs, you know? And I actually, to be honest, like I tried to take some pictures um, but they just weren't that good. So, you know, I, I, I thought that maybe I could send them over to you, like to be featured or something, but I didn't do it. 
anyways, so like those those monoblock chairs like are, are omnipresent and everywhere, and I think it's um, it's pretty interesting that you've managed to create a project around those chairs because, as you just mentioned, you're kind of here and there, you're everywhere, exactly like those chairs as well, you know. So yeah, yes, yeah. that makes it's sense. A funny coincidence, right? Yeah, and also I really like um, serial work or topic or I mean things that deal with uh, things that repeat itself or like a like a large group of stuff that make up a different thing so um, these these chairs do that somehow so they're all part of the same idea or mm -hmm. philosophy in a way so I think that's that's also interesting to me because they all like are brothers and sisters or cousins yeah. um, so it's like it's also a little bit like a collection and i mm -hmm. think ever since i was a kid i i always liked to collect you know first like when we were in, in school it was like stickers everybody hit their sticker albums yeah. and then later it was pokemon cards or whatever so um i think this is okay. also part of why i like doing that because i always feel like oh i need to get them all gotta catch them all you know <laughs> I'm, I'm totally with you in regards to the Pokemon cards. Like, I was doing the same, exactly the same, like everyone did, I, I think. And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting that you've, you've found a way um, of, or you came up with the idea of, like, uh, creating this digital collection of, of chairs. But um, you mentioned before that uh, those pictures of those empty chairs, like, leave a lot of room for imagination. Well, um, what do you imagine when you see those chairs and, and or those pictures of chairs? Well, I guess um, I imagine to be on a holiday. To be honest, yeah, I I just I just want to be somewhere else all the time, and I um I I think so. Either someone just sat there, or someone is going to sit there, or um. I think it's especially interesting when they're like in a more private setting, like in a backyard or on a balcony. So you would imagine, is there like a little Greek grandma that that's going to come on the balcony and have a little um, frappe or like something like, like a snack. So these are the kinds of stories, I guess, that I imagine. Um, yeah. Having, a, having a nice break. <laughs> That's cool. Um, <clears throat> so another thing um, I noticed that while I was scrolling through feet, and I do that actually on a regular basis, um, I noticed that um, a lot of photographs actually are film photographs. Mm -hmm. and, um, you wrote that um, you have a strong background, I guess, in film photography because you, you work with Polaroids and, and analog photography. Mm -hmm. um, so is this is like film photography something um, in regards to vacant chairs you put a emphasis on or just you know yeah um, that's actually a good question because I feel like that has come up a little bit in the past um, it's not something that I do intentionally that um, a lot of the pictures that I find are sometimes by accident so while i was um i'm on my own personal account mm -hmm. so um and i follow a lot of film photographers and i do analog photography myself so i think that's that's how it kind of naturally got there yeah. so it's not that i exclusively um do um feature film photography but i love the aesthetic and i think there is a great um community out there and there's so many good accounts that do um feature that feature um film photographers yeah. and um i follow those so, so i naturally find the chairs because i mean i bet every film photographer has one chair of an empty uh, one pick of an empty chair yeah. in their in their feet so uh, i guess um yeah it's it, it just happened but i like it i mean it, it makes sense yeah and I think it's, um, <clears throat> I think it, it also adds to like a certain, certain aesthetic, right? Because you also, yeah. um, you also wrote, uh, actually, 
every time I say it, uh, just for the viewers, like every time I say you wrote, uh, I asked uh, Dennis to to send me like um, like kind of like artist statement with some background information uh, about him and his project. Um, and you wrote that. Um, oh, sorry, I lost the question. Um, ah, never mind. I'm sorry. Like I think I think it comes back. What you wanted to get to is um, the the style of the photos. Like that's that they look like. Yeah, exactly. that exactly. way? yeah. Um, because there's like, um, um, as you already mentioned, there's like, um, in most of the pictures, there's, they evoke some kind of longing, the, the needs to go on vacation, on travels. And I think the, um, the film photography style adds to this kind of like nostalgic feel. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a really um, fitting aesthetic. But anyways, I mean, like all the pictures you, you show, uh, it, it really doesn't matter if they are like film photographs or done with an iPhone or with like a digital camera, they look really, really interesting and they really want me, or they make me want to go on a journey, you know? That's and, great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, and you, you said that um, you find most of the pictures or that you find the pictures, um, is it usually like this that you approach, um, do you search through Instagram or how do you like get the, the pictures you show? Yeah, so I would say like a third or so is by accident, so just mm -hmm. by scrolling. And then um, I also, I mean, I now follow a lot of people who I know um, take pictures of chairs regularly. So I, yeah. I always keep, keep an eye out for that. And um, then also people um, send me some photos sometimes, or either they send me the photos, which is a bit um, tricky for me because I always try to try to bookmark the the posts so that I can find them later. And when people just um, send me a picture, then it might get lost in the chat somewhere. But yeah, so I go through all the these and then um, I bookmark them. Yeah. And I have a little system, which is, I'm, <laughs> I'm prob I mean, probably all of us have that who, who have like yeah. a feature account. Yeah. So I have like, um, I have different folders for different, different things. So there's like one that's, uh, yes, I want to post that. And then there's one that's is next. So this is going to be in the queue. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is a lot in the queue. So, um, there's a lot waiting to be posted and then I put it all in a grid so that it looks nice, um, order it by color a little bit. Maybe some, some of you have noticed that it's a little bit color coded. I'll, I mean, I think that's a fun way to make the whole feed look cohesive and nice. Um, and yeah, so th that's how I work. I guess yeah. it's um, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting and funny because, um, actually I, I do have the same, or um, yeah, actually the same kind of system, you know. And there's mm -hmm. like uh, there's tons of images like sitting in different folders with like different titles and just waiting to be like put into a grid and organized and then posted. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's pretty funny. Um, by the way, do you know the app um, uh, Unum? No, -N -U -M? Um, this is actually an app. I use um, to to um, yeah to, to post images into a grid to upload them mm -hmm. into a grid and then to like um, move them around and see what mm -hmm. fits best and what looks best. So it's like just, a, a feed planning tool. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. It's, right now it's still for free, so um, it really helps a lot. Yeah. Um, so um, like in your in your creation process, like based on based on what criteria do you select the images? Like, um... Um, so yeah, as we've mentioned before, I always, I'm always looking for that vacation feeling, I guess. So um, I want this to be a page that um, people enjoy looking at. So it's, it's mostly summary, um, yeah, holiday kind of pictures, but um, I want them to have a certain aesthetic yeah. standard so to speak um so if it's if it's an iphone photo from a very weird angle and cropped then it's probably not going to end up on the feet i'm sorry but yeah. um, 
um, apart from that, people can always send me stuff and I'll, I'll check it out and add it to the queue. So, um, yeah, what I'm looking for is beautiful chairs, beautiful location, beautiful light. And um, I think most importantly is composition. So for me, as, an, as a photographer myself, as an artist, I think composition is just one of the most important things you could, yeah, you, you need to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise, um, it's just a photo, really. But but I think what makes the picture the, so good or stand out is the way you compose it. Uh, I mean, there's no right or wrong way to compose things, but I think there is ways to make um, a setting look interesting. Sure, sure. And not just, you know, random. And I, I so I, I like when it's <laughs> intentional and people yeah. have, you know, thought a little bit about it. And I think that you can see it. I think that absolutely people yeah. who photograph a lot, they have a good eye and um, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and you, you, yeah, you're right. You see that absolutely. And that's why I was asking because um, there's in, in, yeah, like in every picture, there's like a certain, um, they have like a certain visual quality to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not just like random pictures of chairs, like, there's always, as you said, there's a certain aesthetic, there's this travel vibe, there's this um, like great composition, beautiful colors. So you really see that um, that this, the, the shots you post and the artists who create them, um, yeah, really put a lot of effort into creating the shots. So I think it's a very, um, like Vacant Chairs Magazine is like a very beautiful way to how do you say it, to, um, to honor this, you know, this effort people put into yeah. those images, right? Yeah, and, that's a good way of saying it, thank you. Yeah, sure. And um, in the notes you sent, you also mentioned that during your studies in Vienna, uh, you attended a seminar and read a text by George Didi Huberman, who's um, a French philosopher and art historian. Mm -hmm. um, and this text dealt with the topic of the imprint and had a great influence on you as an artist. Um, could you elaborate on that? Like in, in what way? Yeah, sure. Um, so the, the seminar in Vienna was, we had to read a lot of books and essays. And at that time, I think I was a little bit overwhelmed. But this um, essay by Georges Didi Übermann, he, um, he, well, he speaks about the topic of the imprint. And... Um, there he talks about um, Marcel Duchamp and other artists, how they use this, this technique. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like, as, as I mentioned before, the, the chair is um, shaped after the human body. So it's, it's shaped to support the human body. Mm -hmm. And um, because you have like the arm rest, you have the, the back um, and you have the, the sitting plane. Um, so, when you look at the chairs, you kind of see a sitting person there. Yeah. And so I, I feel like it's, it's a play of those two. Is it like the, 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 the body and the, and the chair that are like, <laughs> that, uh, start, that like uh, form a union, you know? And um, so that's, that's, for me, that's interesting because um, as I said, I also study fashion design. And then there's this question about whether the body shapes the clothes because when the clothes yeah. are soft, yeah. you know, the body makes them in a certain way or are the clothes shaped after the body, you know, because they have to fit the body. Yeah. And, and the same, I think, goes for chairs. You can, you can kind of like do it both ways, especially when the chairs are like a little bit more soft or squishy then the body also ch uh, shapes um, shapes the, no, yeah, the body shapes the chair. But then also when the, um, when you just sit on a chair, you have, you, you take a position. So you have to have, you have to have a sit certain position to sit in a chair comfortably. So mm -hmm. that also goes into that. I mean, it's very yeah. philosophical, I guess, but this, this is what's in the back of my mind when I, when I work on these things. So basically, it's kind of um, 
Yeah, I would say it like a like a chicken or the egg question, right? So yes, what yeah. came first, the chair who was which was shaped to to accommodate a person or a sitting person, or uh, was it the person who thought, okay, you know what I mean? Like so, yeah, absolutely. And um, back to the to the monoblock chairs, like you wrote that you not only feature monoblock chairs, um, but that those are by far your favorite ones. Um, why is that? Um, because I mean, you, you could have just, you could have focused on like regular armchairs, right? Mm. So why especially the monoblock chair? I think what's so interesting about the monoblock chairs is that they are everywhere, like in, in almost every country. And I think the, the, the reason of that is um, because they were, they were so cheap or are so cheap to produce. So a lot of people um, use them as, as either garden chairs or they, they sit in a cafe. You see them in a lot of um, warmer places, on, in a hotel, on a balcony. Um, and I think that's what makes them interesting because you can, you can basically find them everywhere. Yeah. Um, and, and also in like little, small, very, like a... Like yes. A, um, different variations different variations yeah and sometimes you, you can you can sometimes see like like uh, like faces in them or like they they come as a shaped as a bench you know yeah so absolutely absolutely and i think that's also a very fun way to to look at it because sometimes you see oh that's a color i've never seen before you know usually they are white but they also come blue or black or whatever but sometimes they there are there's a yellow one or a red one and then you're like oh wow that's that's interesting and as i have never seen a colored one so no you haven't then you should scroll a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah sure on your feet of course on your feet ah, you but, in real life. yeah in real life i've, I've only okay. seen the white ones so Yeah, you, you need to look for them. So. <laughs> I mean, actually, I, st I start now. Like, I started now to, to look out for those chairs, you know, still with the idea in mind to take, like, a beautiful picture I could send, a, send over to you. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so you said that from a philosophical or design theoretical point of view, Uh, you find empty chairs highly exciting because they are reminded of something, uh, and in this case, a person is missing or is no longer present. Um, what is it that excites you about this idea um, of like an um, of something which or someone who is not present in the moment? Mm. Uh, so I think maybe exciting is the wrong word, but. Um, It interests me, I would say. It interests me because um, it shows that there is a lack of something yeah, or it exactly. reminds you that there's a lack of something yeah. and that um, automatically creates like a mood of um, melancholy or solitude, absence, you know, a longing for, for something to be there. And... That's uh, something that I find interesting in my own photography, mm -hmm. um, in my own work. And so I think it's just um, a logical consequence that this yeah. is also um, part or, um, yeah, this is also happening in the Vacant Chairs magazine. Mm -hmm. So I find it, it's hard to explain because it's really um, a personal feeling, but I, uh, it seems like a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's mostly this like melancholic feeling of maybe like what's best describing it is like when you're at the end of a day on the beach, you're on vacation, you spend the whole day on the beach, you went, went into the water, you, you were bathing in the sun and then you're taking your towel and you're going back to the hotel and you're taking one last look at the, at the beach chairs. And you remember the nice day that you spent there and you feel a little bit sad, but you're also looking forward to dinner and um, to the next day. Um, so I think this is kind of like what I'm trying to, to show or to, to create. It works. <laughs> That's It works. great. And it's, it's really, I think it's really charming that um, you, you put 
yeah, like so many stories and so many ideas in this like mundane object. Mm. You know? Yeah, it's 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 like a really it's like a really exciting way of like um, how do you say it? Um, Vanium. <laughs> I speak German actually. No, yeah, 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 me too. I can to right. recognize it's like a really um, exciting way to to um, to recognize um, objects um, in the surrounding, and it's I think it's it's very charming that like you have so many um, um, ideas and um, like a strong imagination when it comes to those those chairs and those objects which are absolutely um, visible in your stream and in the whole project, you know, and... And I also think it's a, it's a way of looking at these mundane objects in a new way, you know, giving, giving things a second look because a, a lot of things are overlooked. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, um, this is a thing a lot of photographers do, that they look at, at like mundane, ordinary objects and recontextualizing them yeah. so i think this is um this is highly interesting yeah absolutely absolutely and it, like the that was actually something i i thought about because um i i really enjoyed the i really enjoyed the idea of like as you said it re recontextualizing or repurposing um the the object from its initial function you know because the chair as you said it um is actually just an object um designed to sit down on mm -hmm. and um at some point it's devoid of its own function because the person stands goes yeah. away the chair is not really used anymore and then it gets put aside you know yeah. and in a way i think that's also something that's really charming about the pictures you show is that they um, repurpose the chair and remove it from, from its initial function. And you mentioned before also Marcel Duchamp, um, he basically did the same thing with the toilet, right? Exactly. And so the works you show, they remove the object from their initial function and create a new form or a new function for this, and which is then uh, this, this art piece, basically. Yeah, that's actually very interesting that you mentioned it because I actually never thought about it that, that way, but it makes so much sense because I'm really a big fan of ready-made art. Yeah. And in a way, I that's exactly what, what this is, because it's... Um, it's a designed piece that has has an, uh, a function and it's removed from that certain surrounding and put put in a different context and so you begin to look at it in a different way so it's just um a chair but then you also kind of like see a four-legged creature in there maybe yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like when they lay on the side it looks yeah. kind of like looks like a how oh, they're stuck into like fences because there are some pictures where where they are like you know, put into fences and you know, put together like a like a huge figure or something. Yeah. So when you when you combine a lot of them, it also also makes them into a sculpture and makes them into something completely different than they were ne never intended to be. But I think that's that's what makes it fun. Mm. Yeah. And and yeah, I really I really imagine it um, as something funny and exciting to perhaps as a bystander to witness someone who's who's trying to stack the chairs up to create like <laughs> form you know and put them into fences and um i hope that uh, because you also created the hashtag bacon chairs magazine and people can submit their work through this mm -hmm. hashtag and it would be so funny to see like that the hashtag that like, gets blown up and people especially also here in Berlin start you know photographing those those chairs and like maybe stacking them up or so so mm. it's really funny to witness that and um so yeah so so you also created the hashtag for people to um to submit their work mm. they get into contact with you as well right like yes people yeah. send, them, send your work over and do you have like uh, I mean actually you you started this vacant chairs project um 
it's not that old yet, right? No, I started it last spring, so spring 22, yeah. Yeah. No, 20, 2020, I'm sorry, spring 2020, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. yeah, because it's it's not that, but, but I think that it's so it's so present um, on my feed and like in my head that I thought that it's like it's, it's way way older and there's so much work on it already. So yeah. it it really it really feels and, and looks like an like an um, established project. Yeah, and I really found it interesting because you um, in the text you sent me you also you wrote that it's like that you just created it recently. Um, so, and I was really amazed by that because there's so much content already there and um, a lot of people um, to, to, to whom I, I write, like sometimes on a regular basis, um, after I posted that we are having this conversation, they, <laughs> they texted me and were like, yeah, I really like this, this project and I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it. And so many people already know it. Um, it's, it's really great. It's really great to see that. That's very lovely that you say that because, um, of course, you, you mostly when you're doing this, you see the likes and sometimes the comments. Yeah. But it's it's really nice to hear that people actually enjoy it and and know about it because I feel like a lot of followers um, are just like silent followers, so you don't really uh, interact with them that much. But but when you when you or people you're like you know them, that's actually interesting. So yeah, thanks for that insight. Sure. Um, and um, yeah, so if you just want to um, talk about how it started, mm -hmm. um, that was last spring. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I got asked if it was um, like a comment on the Corona COVID situation um, because the chairs are empty, the people are gone, they're yeah. staying in quarantine. So it's not actually that. It could be read as that. I mean, if you want to read it that way, that's fine. Uh, but I, that was not really my intention. So for me, it was more like I was being in quarantine or I was staying at home a lot. And it was something that I had thought about doing for a long time. Because mm -hmm. um, I had um, taken pictures of empty chairs myself a lot. Yeah. And I wanted to create a, an account for that. But then um, I thought maybe it's a good thing for other people to come join me and not just be like this selfish person and only share my work, but because there are so many beautiful pictures there um, that I could never take because I haven't been to the locations or for whatever reasons, I thought I'd just make this a whole community project. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, it started last, last May and it grew ever since. I'm, I'm really surprised that it got so much positive feedback and became so popular so fast yeah yeah and i and i feel that um that um oh first of all do you post your own pictures in the stream as well i do i do yeah ah, okay because i haven't i haven't found them i mean like i scrolled through a lot of pictures but i will do it again um because you also said that or you wrote that um you you also took pictures of empty chairs like with a polaroid camera so I was just wondering if you if you uploaded them on the stream as well. Um, yeah, I sneak them in there. I sneak them in there as from time to time. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, why not, right? Right. So, um, and I just wanted to ask, like, have you have you been able to go on vacation yet, or is it still is it still an idea or in the making? This year, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I wanted uh, honestly. I wanted to wait until I'm fully vaccinated. Sure, um, sure. I got my second shot two weeks ago, so um, I'm almost almost there. And then um, I'm planning to to going to Greece in September. Nice. Um, nice. But we will see. I mean, this year is crazy, and you'll never know if it, if it will happen. But I'm 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 planning on going to Greece. Yeah. Any idea on where to go? Yeah, I actually Crete again. Because um, I've been to Crete right now, and it's it's yeah. just so beautiful. I mean, you've been there, and um, yeah. it's just lovely. The people are lovely. The weather is good. And the food is good. So well, it's, it's, not it's, it's so funny because for me, it was my first time over there. And mm -hmm. and after I started posting like pictures from Crete, I mean, you wrote me, yeah, and, and some some other people wrote me also. Um, 
uh, greetings to Mark Besudo from, from Street Cola, mm -hmm. um, because he as well wrote me um, since he is, I think right now he's still in Croatia, but he's planning oh. on going to Crete as well um, by end of August, um, start of September. And I found it so funny because so many people and also you just texted me, oh, that's Crete, oh, that's there. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, I should have gone a bit later because then it would have been so funny to see all those people in person over there. <laughs> and, big um, sorry? Big Instagram party there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, since Crete is such a, such a lovely and famous place, maybe yeah. at some point, um, I keep that as an idea in mind. Yeah, okay. So while, while we're at it, do you have any plans um, going forward with bacon shares? Like, do you have something in the making or? Um, yeah, I, I get asked that sometimes. Um, so yeah, when I started it, I had the idea of at some point putting it into like, um, like an actual physical thing. So it could be a magazine or, or a book. Yeah. Um, but right now, actually, I'm a little bit overwhelmed with all the things that have to be done to do that. So yeah. all by my own. I mean, I have a friend who has studied graphics, graphic design, and I was talking to him about it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's something that I'm looking to do but it's not in the near future. So um, last year I said, yeah, yeah, in 2021, it's going to happen. But no, it's not going to happen in 2021. So it's, um, I'm, I'm having it in the back of my mind and I want to do like a, like a printed version of some sorts, but I cannot tell you when. I cannot tell you when. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be on the look. Um, on the lookout for that because, uh, I think I think this would be like a pretty exciting idea to um, create like a you know like a small zine or a book oh. um, also in in like um, in collaboration with all the artists or with some artists um, and I think it would it would be like a really great idea to have or to create like a physical copy of um, yeah of me too I, I think it would be a nice um, like a how do you say in like an unfinished encyclopedia of, uh, yeah. of empty chairs. So, <laughs> no, totally. I would, I would love that. It's just um, a way of figuring out how to do it and how to make it possible beside, you know, my own work and mm -hmm. this life. <laughs> sure, sure. And I mean, still, like, times are still a bit chaotic and hectic mm -hmm. and uncertain. So, um, yeah. But I, I really hope that this um, this project and the account like grows and like more and more people get to show them uh, to show you their work and um, yeah it's a really really beautiful project a lot of people like it and um, thank you so much for creating it thank like, you so uh, much for having me yeah, yeah thank sure. you so um, yeah. Thank you a lot for taking some time off today again. Sure. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. And um, I'm sure that we're going to stay in touch. And uh, um, maybe at some point we'll meet up again. Yes. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. So have a great day, all right? Yeah, all right. Oh, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. I'm sorry. Um, I forgot. Okay, so no one, there were no questions posted here. Oh, my but, I mean, you had some good questions in there, so I mean. Uh, thanks. That's... thanks. Um, yeah, I'm just making sure. Okay, so there are no questions posted. That's it. Thanks again for the talk. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, too. Bye. Oh, bye.